It'll be one to go this time, bye. Coming to the green, buddy, coming to the green. Let's go get him. Go, 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 take, 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 go, 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 go. Get some motor running. Tens here at Talladega. I want my name tag. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Don't hit me. Jeff, heading into uh, Talladega, your outlook and approach for this race on Sunday. Um, you know, it's it's Talladega. There's, um, you know, I think it's clear that anything can happen here. Um, you know, when, whenever I come here, I try, I do my best not to start the wreck, and uh, therefore hope I'm not in it. Um, you know, the chances are that it's going to be a, uh, this will be a, this will be a big race for, uh, for us guys racing for the championship. You know, one of the things that's interesting here is you can run really well and finish 28th. I mean, you can, you know, you can be in a lead pack, and uh, make one wrong move or get shuffled out with two to go, and you know, cross the start finish line in a lead pack and have a 28th place finish. So it's a, uh, it's a hugely challenge, challenging racetrack. Um, you know this. Uh, I think it's going to be it's going to be pretty entertaining. I um, I don't think we're going to see a tremendous amount of patience. I think that there's uh, we're getting to the point of the year where people have a lot to prove and uh, a lot to gain. And I think uh, I think we'll see a, a race that uh, that that's run a little more aggressively than we've seen these last two races here. If you have a question for Jeff, raise your hand. We've got uh, wireless mics. We'll start with Mike, then we'll go to Bob. Go ahead, Mike. Mike Henry, NASCAR scene. Jeff Gregg talked a few minutes ago about uh, w when things get really packed early in the race in the middle of the pack there, just pulling back out of that and running 30th or 35th for a while or whatever. But can you do that? You know, can you – is there enough space to drop back, you know what I mean, and, and get out yeah. of all that? Yeah, and, you know, I find it interesting. Some people drop back and run like 10 car lengths behind the wreck, and I'm not really sure that makes any sense. Um, I think if you're going to drop back, you have to drop back. I don't think that you can just be 10 car lengths behind the big pack and, and think that you're doing yourself a lot of good. Um, you know, I don't go, I'm, I'm not going to go into this race with a, with a race decision of, of riding around in the back. If, if things start to get what I believe to be out of hand and I start to, to, um, to, to think that something's going to happen, I might, I might move myself out. But, um, you know, I've seen that work a few times, but I've seen it not work more times than I've seen it work. And and uh, for me, you know, I'd rather I'd rather be in there and understand what my car can and can't do, uh, and try to learn. But I think it is important to understand it's a 500 mile race, and if you can be you can be running 30th with with 100 to go and still win the race. So, um, you know, track position is not as important here as it is everywhere else we go. And uh, you'll see, I think you'll see some people drive accordingly. I mean, we we've, we've seen it every race, and I think you'll see it here as well. I don't we'll go, anticipate doing that. But. We'll go Rusty, Jim, and uh, Mr. Bolton. Rusty Ball, NASCAR Media Group. Uh, I asked Greg the same question. Um, a couple of weeks we go to Martinsville. A lot of people say Talladega is a wild card. Martinsville's probably also one. You can't run in the back there. Just your thoughts going there, and after all, it is Virginia, so you must well, like it. Well, it is, it is a tough racetrack. It's, uh, I mean, it's, you know, again, we, we're going to have a race that, uh, you know, Stuff's going to happen to chase contenders this weekend, uh, and stuff's going to happen to chase contenders at Martinsville. I can I can almost guarantee it. I don't know who it's going to be, but I can almost guarantee it's going to be some of us. Um, again, Martinsville is one of those places. If you get all, if you get back a little bit, it's hard to pass. If your car's not handling it very well, it's hard to cover it up. Uh, some of the bigger racetracks, it's a little easier to like find a place and and not hide, but kind of just. You know, find a way to race by yourself and not worry about the competition. You can't do that at Martinsville. Um, I think it's a I think it's a racetrack that that will you be a huge barometer on who can win the championship. I really do. I think it's going. I think that uh, as tight as things are, um, you know, one one bad race, a series of bad races could could certainly take you out of it. And certainly for certainly for um, you know the guys that are toward the back. I mean, even where we are, we're fourth, but we're you know we're over 100 points back. We we you know. We can't afford bad races. Jim, Mike, Reagan, go ahead. Yes, Jim Bentley with the Kansas City Star. Jeff, would you put this race on your personal list of ten races to be in the chase? My, my theory on, on races that ought to be in the chase, or I think it ought to be representative of the regular season. Um, 
you know, the, the example of that that I give is road course racing. A lot of people say, hey, uh, uh, you know, we ought to have a road course in in the chase. I disagree with that because 50, if we had two road course races and one was in a chase, 50% of the races would be represented in, within the chase. We run three regular season super speedway races, point paying races, so I believe that it's, it's fair to have one of these to be, in, to be into the chase.